here we are getting ready to place the plenums. Uh, first step, as always, is to measure twice and cut once. So we're checking here to see if we can get two outlets into this kitchen area. So we're very carefully taking our measurements right now, accounting for where the joy spaces will be and where the trusses will be. Now, here at the closet, very important, again, right. check twice, cut once. We are drilling a hole for the base of the floor and taking a coat hanger wire to see if we have proper alignment. Ah, turns out we don't. We have something obstructing our, our view, so we're going to have to try this over again. Nope, not working. So the one is going through fine, the other one I'm having a little bit of problem with. So we're going to have to drill another hole in here. And again, to check this, we take a coat hanger wire, we bend it two inches at the end to simulate the space that we need for the outlet, and run this through the, the proposed joy space. One, one, one and a half feet. So if I'm out one and a half feet from the wall, I'm assuming that the walls line up. Mm -hmm. Okay, our installer Bill Brunson has just drilled the first of two holes for the closet at the base of the closet here. This is what we're going to run our supply tubing to to go down to the first level. We're using two and a half inch tubing for that. So he's going to, he's drilled the pilot holes, now he's drilling the holes themselves out for the upper level. Alright. Everything went well? Very good. Alright. Alright, so now I'm going to have to decide if I want to punch a little hole through here and see where I am downstairs. Because otherwise I'm going to pop a hole through downstairs where I want to be. And this is why you use the coat hanger is to see where these are. You're going to take yeah. a coat hanger and a mirror and see how that lines up. Correct. So, Bill is now measuring in the lower level to check our measurements that we just took up at the closet. And he's checking this against the outside wall. When he determines this, he's going to drill a pilot hole and insert, and he's drilling the pilot hole now. Okay, now he's going to insert the coat hanger wire, and then we're going to go back upstairs, take a flashlight and a mirror, and see how this aligns. So we're checking to see if everything is in alignment before we cut the final hole. Okay, Bill is now checking with his mirror uh, to see how this coat hanger aligns. Bill, how's it looking? Yep, I see the coat hanger. So do we have room in this joy space? Yes. Okay, all right, that's a go. Now there'll be five runs eventually going down to the lower level. They're all going to be two and a half inch tubes. So we know that our first one uh, will work. And we're going to have two uh, next to each other in the downstairs area. So what we found is with our first pilot hole, we were a little bit more inside than we wanted it to be. We drilled a second pilot hole, as you can see right here, with the coat hanger coming down. That's the one we're going to use. We're going to patch up a little quarter-inch hole that we created with the pilot hole. Now I've got the two that I'm, you know, are good. So basically I have to have a hole big enough for two 
tubes to go through. But before I do that, I have to go through, get through the ceiling too. So I want to see how sure, that aligns. See how that aligns. And the best way to make it look. So I'm going to have to get a ladder now. So you're going to need a ladder to get up to that level. Right there. Pushing our coat hanger in. See how we look for clearance in the attic. Got the pilot hole drilled from the closet ceiling up into the attic, and we're clear from any obstacles. So we're we're good to drill a four-inch hole. Yeah, that's it. I'm going to close up the end of the tubing so we can push it up into the attic without getting any dirt or insulation. In the We've drilled our pilot holes. Make sure that everything aligns correctly. Now the next step is we're going to take a four and a half inch hole saw since we're using two and a half inch supply tubing. And we have a little basketball attached to the drill to catch the plaster and lath. All right. Now you notice we have two outlets fairly close to one another. That's okay. With Unico, because of the aspiration concept, this is perfectly fine. As long as we're not blocking the outlet. Okay, okay. we're going to be pulling our two and a half inch supplies through the holes that we just cut in the last segment. Brian is just reaching in here and we're going to pull this down. I think we're good now. And we're going to pull that down about a foot or so, just so that we have a little bit of a stub to work with. Okay. We're pulling this down. We've got about a foot coming down from out of here. This is our two and a half inch sound attenuating tubing. And we have them stubbed for when we attach the outlets, which will be our next step. Okay, we're going to do the final step here at the first floor, which is to attach our outlets. And again, just like we did before, we pull back the insulation. We slide on the clamp. Now, this is the aluminum clamp. The aluminum clamp is what we use for the sound attenuator tubing. And then we push in our outlet, which is a left-handed thread. just spins right in. And then we take a, a clamp plier next and attach the clamp. Now the last step is very important. We have to push the insulation into the tape ring, which is a part of the white plastic outlet, and take some UL181A rated tape around it. good. This is a, a, a drywall ceiling. This would also be good in a plaster and lath ceiling. So again, when you put the, the uh, toggles in securely, Okay, as we tighten that up, that finishes our installation of this outlet.
And we'll do the same with the final outlet down here. 